Hello everyone, let's look at this series here. We have this power series that we also want to find the radius of convergence of and the interval of convergence. And how do we do that? We are just like usual, we are going to use a ratio test and see what's going to happen. Okay, so let's just write down the turn. We are going to have the a sub n, which is just the original expression right here, a uh, negative one to the n and then x to the n and then we're actually just copying that, right? So let me just quickly do that. We have 4n plus 3 factorial. And then now the next turn, which is the n plus 1. So we're going to get n plus 1 right here. And then we are going to replace all the n's by the n plus 1. So we are going to get negative 1 to the n plus 1. And then x to the n plus 1. Okay, and then also the denominator, which will probably require a little bit more work because of the factorial. So we are going to get four times n plus three factorial, and then the n will be replaced by the n plus one. Yeah, so now what happens is that we are going to have to do a little bit of simplifying on this expression right here. So we are going to get negative one to the n plus one. So because we are going to use the ratio test, so we don't need to really worry about the alternating factors. They are going to disappear once we put them inside the absolute value. So for the x, we are going to get x to the n times x. Okay. And then now at the bottom, let's see what's going on here. So for the um, for the denominator, we are having um, this expression right here. It's really just 4n plus 4 plus 3, okay? So that's 4n plus 4 plus 3. That's 4n plus 7. So that's really just saying that, okay, um, if we want to write down the expression in here, then we actually need to write 4n plus 7 factorial, and then it's going to be 4n plus 6, 4n plus 5, 4 and plus 4, and then 4 and plus 3. And so that means you are going to get a lot of factors that will be showing up here. And then eventually we are going to get the 4 and plus 3. So we are having 4 n plus 7, which is the largest factor, and then 4 n plus 6, and then 4 n plus 5, and then 4 n plus 4, and then 4 n plus 3 and then factorial. Okay, so I just realized that the fraction line is not even long enough to cover that. So that's a lot of factors, okay? So now that's what the expression looks like. I think I need to just put things closer so that it's not too close to the edge of the screen. Okay, so now that's what we have here. And then what are we going to do next? We are going to take the ratio of um, the two expressions, right? So first, we are just going to be copying this, and then we are going to multiply by the reciprocal of this expression right here. So let's do that. So starting with the ratio test, we are going to let n approach infinity. And then we are going to get what? Just all that stuff right here. So to make things quick, I'm just going to copy this expression because that's a lot of writing that I need to do. Okay, so it'll be right here. Which is nice. And then we are going to get what times now the reciprocal of this a n. So it becomes what four n plus three factorial And then the negative one to the n, and then x to the n. Yeah, so that should be okay. Now what? Now let's do some canceling right here. We can cancel the four n plus three factorial, right? Then we can also cancel x to the n. And then we also don't really need to worry about the uh, 
the alternating factors, right? The leg of the one to the n plus one or the leg of the one to the n. So now we can just write down whatever that's left the limit, which actually just become what? We have a just the x in the numerator. But then we have a lot of stuff in the denominator. We have the 4n plus 7, 4n plus 6, 4n plus 5, and then 4n plus 4. And then all that. But so in in fact, it doesn't really matter what x is equal to because when n is approaching infinity, this whole fraction is approaching zero. So you actually will get zero as the the limit for the result. So so what what is what this limit is really just saying is that okay, so I plug I plug in one million into the x. It doesn't really matter here because when n is approaching, it's getting larger and larger. The denominator is going to approach infinity, as you can see here. Four n plus seven is approaching infinity. Four n plus six is approaching infinity. Four n plus five is approaching infinity, and then four n plus four is also approaching infinity. So all those four factors are approaching infinity. When you multiply them all together, that's also going to approach infinity. And then it doesn't matter what x that you plug in, right? This limit will be zero. And according to the ratio test, as long as your limit is less than one, then the series is convergent. And what happens right now is that the series is convergent for all x values that you plug in, right? Because when you plug in, it will be just uh, any finite number that you plug in. And this limit is always going to be zero. So we say the series is convergent for all real numbers x. Okay, so now what, what does that mean? That means the radius of convergence. So the radius of convergence is R equals, there's no fixed number for the radius. So the radius of convergence is infinity. Because if you draw the picture, just like my the other video, if you have watched that one already, just think about this. If you just draw the picture and just think about what happens, let's say our center, let's go back to our original series right here, whatever that makes this x equal to zero, well, zero will make it zero, right? So the center for this power series is zero here. So that's the center. And then what really happens is that no matter what x value that you plug in on the lumber line, what happens? The series is still convergent. So that means there is the radius is infinity. You can go as far as you want in either direction. Okay. And so I cannot really draw that circle just like the other video. Um, <clears throat> It's really because we can go as far as we want in either direction. So the radius of convergence is R equals infinity. Okay, so it's infinity. And then what about the interval of convergence? And then because we are taking all x values, right? So the interval of convergence and the interval of convergence is actually just what? It's negative infinity to positive infinity because you can take the whole number line. Okay, there, there are no endpoints that we need to test for this problem, unlike the other video that, that you have seen. Okay, so that's it for this problem. This is a nice series because uh, we can actually put in any x value and then the series will still converge. So that's nice. Okay, so if you like this video, please subscribe to my channel and then give me some support. Thank you for watching this video. I will see you next time.